Hey, Eli here. Today I want to talk to you about my wedding kit from 2020 fall till now, 2023 February, and probably most likely what I'll be using for the next year. Um, yeah, got a little bunch of lenses. Got one body today. I got an R6 II on the way tomorrow, but uh, I want to talk about what I've been using, how it's worked for me, and then I'll get more in depth in some other videos talking about each of these items, uh, mainly lenses. Um, yeah, so just a summary from the last two years, I've shot with the R US R, uh, delivered 3,147 images with that camera, and then the R3, I delivered 28,425 images, R5, I delivered 26,550 images, and the R6, I delivered 83,778 images. Um, I've taken way more. Uh, probably over 400,000 images with the two R6s that I had. Those have both been sold um, due to high shutter counts. They were great cameras, 20 megapixel, no problem with those. Uh, photographed weddings around the world, Mexico, Istanbul, and all over Oregon, uh, all over the States. Um, but yeah, they, my clients have printed huge images with them and they've turned out great. Um, but yeah, so just kind of jumping in here right now, I have the EOS R5. Um, R6 II on the way, comes in tomorrow, take that to Sedona this week, and uh, yeah. So, see how I like it. This is the 28-70 uh, to 70 F2. This lens is huge, but man, I, gosh, I mainly use this uh, for all my images. Uh, just a quick number on that is I've delivered 70,667 images with this thing. Um, it's pretty much the go-to for everything. It's big, but... Uh, if you just need one lens to do it all, you're going to get some great bokeh. You're going to get amazing autofocus, amazing sharpness. Uh, this lens is sharper than the 24 to 70. Um, but yeah, it's it's amazing. It's big. I'll make a separate video on that one just so you can learn all about it and look through some images. Uh, if you haven't used it, um, it's amazing. It's not cheap, but you know you can't beat it. Uh, I do miss a little bit of that prime from 35, 24. 28 seems to be enough on the, the width of this lens. There's times when I will go to the 24 or the 14 just because I need that. Um, next up would be the 50 millimeter 1.2. Uh, it's amazing. It will lose a little bit of color um, when you go down to 1.2, but you get the bokeh, you know, to combat that. I mean, it's just, it's just beautiful. Uh, for lens flares, a little crazy, but they're fun. And with this image, with this lens, I delivered, I think it was number two, I delivered 25,841 images. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's amazing. It's, there's times when I want that 85 to, you know, give a little more, a little less uh, width on the image as far as like distortion. Uh, 85 seems to come out a little, makes everyone a little taller, a little, little slimmer. Uh, but yeah, if you're shooting with this lens horizontally, you're gonna have no problem with distortion um, and it's gonna be extremely sharp in the center. So love that lens. It's great for portraits. It's great for just moments and really when you, when you want to separate your subject. Uh, number three would be the 70 to 200. This lens, I love. It's so small. Uh, you know, it, it used to have lenses that were that big for 20 or 70 200s. Um, but this lens is my, you know, reach out ceremony, grab what I need to grab or bring in the mountains, get some compression. I make a lot of panoramics with this. So six image panos um, probably is, is the most I'll go. But i um, really stuck in the mountains. I live in Bend, Oregon. So we've got a lot of mountains and I want to bring them in closer. Um, with this one, I delivered, let's see here, 14,171 images. So I think this is actually number four. Uh, number three would have been the 24 to 70 so that I've used. Uh, how, how often I've used it. Um, so yeah, next 24 to 70. Uh, you may wonder why I have a 24 to 70 and a 28 to 70. Um, mainly for second shooters. I like my second shooters to use the same gear that I have. It makes editing way easier. And so I generally will have a third camera uh, for them to use, whoever that is. Um, but also there are times when 24 and 28 are kind of drastically different. Um, I photograph at Smith Rock a lot, and there's just this one spot where I need just that little more to get the whole canyon in, in view during a ceremony. And so um, I will use this for a lot of ceremonies when I jump to the back, um, when 28 is not wide enough. Then next would be the 14 millimeter Samyang, super good bargain. I've used the 15 to 35, 
and it's a great lens, but it's not cheap. And as much as I use 14 or 15, I find it better for me to have one dedicated lens that's cheaper and smaller. So I can just stuff it anywhere in my bag and then um, just pull it out when I need it. And so with that one, I delivered 2,400 images um, in the last two years. So don't use it a lot, but it's it's good to have. And then the 85 Samyang, I've used the 85 RF. It's way too expensive. It's amazing, but um, this is, gosh, a fraction of the price. And the only drawback, I think, is you lose a little bit of sharpness and you um, get a little more warmth out of your image and you may get a little more flare. Um, you know, it's hard to say, but with this one, I delivered 6,315 images. And so I don't use it a ton. Um, but it's always around. I make a lot of panoramics with it, like Brenizer methods, uh, you know, vertical images. I also uh, have the GFX 100S, which I'm filming on. So I use this a lot less because I have the 80 mil on that camera. So I default to that camera. But if I didn't have the GFX, I'd probably use it a lot more. And then this is uh, the 3518. I rarely use this thing, <laughs> hardly, hardly at all. Um, that's another thing I just noticed I didn't talk about was these lenses have the um, little ring on there and you can customize it, but I rarely use it because the placement is always so different on each lens. Um, 7200 is on the back, uh, the other lens is on the front, but if you're using these lenses, you're going to find that it's um, they're all wider or different sizes. I do prefer aperture rings when they're all close to the body and they have a lot more uh, similar feel to them. Uh, Sony does a good job of that, but, um, but yeah. So that's mainly about lenses and bodies. Um, I'll get into depth. I'll make a video, probably not about this lens, but I'll make one about each of these lenses. Um, and then other gear I use, I've got this uh, Flashpoint Godox Mix 1-2. This is the R2. And um, this thing, you just, you, you know, <laughs> it keeps up with everything I need it to. When I'm at a reception, I will generally photograph at 1,000 ISO. And then I just set this at the minimum. And I shot the R3 30 frames a second, and this thing didn't quit. Um, I've got the little dealio on there um, to diffuse light. And I generally set it probably right about there. But this thing's been awesome. I do have a, the smaller version. I think it's the 350. Uh, it takes two double A's, but somehow I always leave it on and it's always dead. But it's a good second photographer. Um, flash. And then I use various different RGB lights. Um, I can't even remember the brand of this one. I'll put it in the description, but it doesn't really matter who you get it from. Um, but yeah, I will use these just for added light when I need it. And then I'll also set them to RGB and uh, let them fluctuate. So if I need to add a little bit of like party light, if they don't have like a DJ that's got lights, or if I just think it need, it adds to the scenario, I've got three of these, I'll put them around the reception and either point them at the wall or point them at the dance floor and it gives a little bit of life to it. Uh, makes it a little more fun. And then again, I'll be photographing all dancing with a flash. And then when I'm out taking portraits, um, hopefully this is in frame, I've got the Godox uh, ML60 by and then the ADS the salt box that you can buy for it and then it's got two Sony batteries and then you know you can control your color temp your power and so it's a really good just in the field soft light that you you can add in to a lot of situations um, that I find to be really helpful I've got two of those and then I've got a plug-in one that I'll use sometimes for like a, a flare light just kind of give a little bit of character to like a first dance or something Anything slow, I'll use that on the dance floor, but mainly for portraits when I need it. And then Clever Supply Co. These straps are amazing. Um, I had previously had a couple sets of a different brand that were a lot squeakier. They got the metal things. Uh, and so I had to buy third-party clips to just make it easier uh, for those brands. But for Clever Supply Co., they're using the uh, Peak Design. And these things are awesome. Uh, they're way quieter, way lighter. Um, yeah, I think they're great. Uh, I did add a peak strap to the chest because I do find that um, they wanted to kind of separate in my chest. And so I just added a peak design uh, chest strap to it. So right there. And then for bags, I always use Tenba. I don't, it's just, it seems to fit. One thing I love about Tenba is they've got, always got these wide pockets on the side so I can fit you know, pretty much any of my lenses in there. And that allows me to hold five lenses at once if I need to. Generally, I'll have four lenses in the bag 
and then I'll have a body in the pocket in the front or in the middle and then I'll have uh, my other camera on my strap um, or I'll have them both on a strap but generally I try and use one camera as much as possible and then I did the bring your own bag um, kit and I put it inside to beef up the bag because uh, bags tend to tend to squish over time and so that's allowed me to kind of like get a little more structure out of it and then I'll you know put all my batteries and stuff in the front and then the back I'll have a timeline generally two of them or three of them because I'll lose one and then hand one off to my second shooter and then I'll have um, just you know my cards in here so speaking of cards I use Sony tough cards they've been great I'd like to try out the OWC ones uh, that just came out and then I use Angelbird for my CF Express Type B cards. You can't really beat the price on them. So I think that's pretty much everything that I take to a wedding day. But yeah, um, yeah. If you are more interested in learning about each of these lenses and how they work for me and seeing some actual images from them, you can you know subscribe and follow, and I'll I'll try and get those videos out ASAP as well as a video on the um, Canon R6 II, and so. I really love the R6. I think it was probably my best camera that I've ever used uh, as far as like a wedding day. Um, 20 megapixels still did great. Um, these are all gonna look a little sharper when you're at 20 megapixels versus uh, 50 or 45, 45 megapixels, sorry. But still, all these lenses hold up at 45 megapixels. So um, yeah, hope you uh, like this video. Hopefully it's helpful and then you know, the other videos are probably more helpful because you'll see some actual examples. Thanks.